and uh, it has vocabulary and everything else in there, okay? And hey guys, just make sure you guys mute yourselves when you're not speaking, okay? Get a little bit of noise that comes from everybody. Sometimes when you, you cough, you sneeze, you do whatever, okay? So, okay, so hello to everyone, all right? And Alejandro, Alejandro Luna. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here. Ariam. So if for some reason you have a problem reading the article, okay, all right, what you do is just take this, okay, you can take this and put this in the chat. Okay, so you can just stick that in the chat. Let me see, um, let me see something here. Let me see if we can get lucky. Let me see how well this turns out. Huh. Okay, well good. Good. I think this is good enough. Let me see here. All right, so good. Yeah, that's easy enough to read. Okay. So very good. Uh can you start to read here, uh Ariam? Just read what you see on the screen right in here, this whole section here. And just go slow, it's okay. I'm not going to work a lot on pronunciation, but I might help out every once in a while. If there's a word that you can't pronounce, just let me know. Okay. News about Britain. Britain. Extreme sports. Summer's just around the corner. Encouraging some two dots of the tennis rocket or rummage from the cupboard for the cricket bat. But for some in Britain, con traditional outdoor uh, pursuits are just not enough. So how do extreme sports devotees, I don't know, get their kicks? Get their kicks, yep, get their kicks. And that's like they also get their rush, you know. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Extreme sports are about uh, oh God. Ex exhilaration. It's okay. Don't exhilaration. Hate. Yeah, don't don't worry. Okay, it's all right. Exhilaration. Okay. Exhilaration, a skill and danger. They do not normally involve teams, and there are very few rules. People who take part use their skills and experience to control their their risk. That control is what makes them a sport and not just dangerous behavior. Okay, so good. Good. Very good. Okay. And we're going to look at the vocabulary a little bit later down, but we'll talk about some of this as well. So I was really surprised to be able to get such a good lesson. Um, you know, they provide lessons for us, but you can't always share those links. So, yeah, so, so get their kicks. So when you're an extreme sports addict, all right, what happens is you get like a rush, okay? You get like a kick. So um, I'm not going to say I was the best, but I, I used to be a big wave surfer. I surfed typhoons, hurricanes. Uh, I lived out of a backpack in Costa Rica for three months, travel around hitchhiking, surfing big waves, waves there, Northern California, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, what happens is it's really you get this, you get your kicks or you get this rush from doing these things. It's very... Very dangerous, okay, um, but you really don't care. Nothing else matters at that point in time. Uh, you, you won't care about anything else in your life except that. And that's what happens once you get hooked up into these sports. And I'm not talking about somebody who grabs a surfboard on the weekend, somebody who grabs a little mountain bike on the weekend, somebody who goes and grabs a snowboard. People that really crush it and just go a little crazy, they get their kicks or they get their exhilaration, all right? And also, too, these people become very skilled at what they do because typically they'll just drop out, like get jobs at night, waiting on tables, doing things like that, just so they can make enough money to continue their sport. All right? So, okay. 
All right. So, D Dishnaka. Oh, wait, one second. Hello, Nurio? Nuria? Yes. Hi, Nuria. How are you? I'm fine. Hi, guys. Good. Where are you from, Nuria? I'm from Indonesia, but I'm living in Japan. Ah, Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Good, good. How do you how do you like Japan? Yeah. You like Japan? Yeah, uh, very much. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I live nice. in yeah, I live in um ten years. Oh yes, yeah, so you've been there a long time. Actually, you're yeah. taking on a Japanese accent. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, you're, you're you're losing your Indonesian accent. You're turning into Japanese. Japanese accent, but good, but good. Well, very, very nice to meet you, Nuria. Have you been yeah, here on nice Kalinga before? Yeah. Have you been on Kalinga before? Is yeah. This your first time? No. Okay. Well, good. Well, good. Well, welcome nice. to class. We're we're going to continue reading. I provided a uh, link here in the side. Okay. So, Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. And uh, Aria, I didn't mean to ignore you. So devotees. So what a devotee is. Is if you you love something so much, then you devote your time to that. Okay, you give up okay. everything. Yeah. So when I was describing like these extreme sports people, okay, I mean it's seriously like from <laughs> from age 21 to 25, I, I just dropped out and just did not care. And you just devote your life to doing like that one thing or a few things. So um, so that's that's what being devoted. It's like people devote themselves. Like Steve Jobs, he devoted himself. To, uh, to his work, right, and building new things. So he's a devotee in a different way, okay? He actually did something to help out society. So, or maybe not, I don't know. Uh, Dishnaka, go ahead, Dishnaka. Yes, yes sir. Ahead, this year. And Dishnaka, you can pull your microphone away from your mouth just a little bit, okay? Yeah, just pull your microphone just a little bit. Yeah, that's good, that's good, okay? Okay, uh, okay, no, that's, like that's that. fine. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, Otherwise, you get that heavy breathing. <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, hey, just knock out. We barely know each other. So, uh, yeah, okay. Yes. Good. Sorry, sir. Hello, sir? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Here are some. Oh, I reach uh, he, here are just some of the ex extreme sports uh, which are popular in Britain. Uh, Kitas of uh, uh, Kai. Okay. Kite surfing, kite surfing. Kite surfing, kite surfing. Uh, a growing band of uh, enthusiasts have been discovering the thrilling combination of kite, uh, board and waves. Uh, these kites can be uh, up to 17 meters long, catch a gust and you are motoring up, down and across the surf. Uh, British ladies uh, kite surfing cam, cam, uh, champion to uh, Wilson says it's always an ad, uh, adrenaline rush. Am I adrenaline? Yep. Am adrenaline I right? Ad, uh, yes, adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. It's uh, unpredictable. Now, uh, sir, I can't uh, see the screen now. Okay, well, also, I give you guys that link just in case it blurs out too much, okay? Okay, sir. It's okay. Uh, it's always an adrenaline rush. It's unpredictable. Uh, you could jump f five, meter, uh, five feet or, uh, th uh, or 35 feet. You never know if you are going to uh, go up in the air and your heart is just going uh, boom, boom, boom all the time. Okay, go ahead. Co-string. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's not that clear. Will you... Uh, yeah, so yes. there's nothing I can Coast, do. All ah, right, okay. But, now it's all right now. Yeah, okay. Coast, mm -hmm. coast string. Uh, this is exploring the coastline without worrying about the coastal path or finding a rocky, cliffy cow blocking your route. You climb, dive, swim, and clamber from A to B. Uh, there are about 15 operators in the UK offering uh, coast string. Yep. 
So this is like, um, so the same thing like with the California uh, coastline. Okay. So yeah, it's just like going along this coast here, right? And it's just kind of crazy, you know, going along, not really looking for a path. So that's coastering. And then I was showing you the, uh, the kite surfing as well. Okay. So, all right. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Anita, can you read the next one here on skydiving? Just, uh, just read this part here, skydiving. Okay. Okay. Skydiving, traditional parachuting, just doesn't sound risky enough. That's it. So now, skydiving is the name for jumping for a plane and listening to your chest pounding as you follow towards air before you open your parachute at the last moment. Once you have your You've got a few jumps under your parachute. You can throw in some extra risk. For example, try a hook turn. Dean Dunbar is a participant of ExtremeDreams.com and his first side dive was in 1998. Since then, his new hook on the boost of the extreme day every so often I go to I have to go out and I and do something scary scary yep yep something scary okay hey dish knock just just mute yourself okay no problem okay Fabio uh, can you read here the mountain biking okay and mountain biking it's been around so long that bikers are no longer satisfied with just going up and down a mountain. No way the no way these thrill seeking mountain bikers want a big slope to go down very very fast. It's pure made downhill according to Dean Dunbar. People go to all the sky resorts. They share life to the to the top, then bound down. Amazingly, not killing themselves. Okay, so yep, yeah, bound down. So let's go to the vocabulary. Don't worry, we're gonna read some more on um, extreme sports here. Okay, so no problem, no problem. Does is anybody here? Does anybody here do any extreme sports? No? Nothing crazy? Life's extreme enough? What, it, what do you do, Anita? What's your extreme sport? No? Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay? <laughs> so, um, so evens. Read this, read this first vocabulary. Get their kicks. Okay, get their kicks. Get a strong feeling of excitement or pleasure. Okay. So, so what do you, what do you get your kicks out of? It's okay, Evans. You get your kicks out of what? There are certain things that you get a kick out of. You get a you get a kick out Me? of uh, yeah yeah you get a kick out of oh. taking English classes. You get a kick out of, uh, you know, seeing your friends, or what do you get a kick out of? When I have a final exam at university, I get my kicks. You get your kicks from, uh, from yeah. taking the test? Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> good at passing it, right? Passing it. Okay, so good. Good. And the, ne the next word, read the next word. Okay, so, um, exhilaration, extreme excitement. Okay, so do you um, do you have exhilaration, or is there exhilaration when you're uh, taking the test? Uh, yes, yes, maybe. Okay, 
Okay, good. Yep, you'll have some exhilaration. Okay, so Luis, Luis, the next one here with Kite. Hi, Luis, maybe you're muted. Hello, Luis. Yeah, yeah, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I read the guide? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, paper or cloth cover frame flow. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Paper or cloth covered frame flown in the air. Mm -hmm. At the end of a long string using the power of the wine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So this is a this is a regular kite. Okay. And then okay. what they have in here is they have these kite surfing. They have these kites here, and these are actually quite advanced. Um, you have three different kites. You have one for uh, slow or light winds medium winds and then strong winds okay and can anybody Did guess yeah go ahead it's okay did you have a question Luis um, well kite is no uh, uh, extreme uh, sport no? No, but kite surfing is. Kite, yeah, kite surfing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So what these guys do, this is extreme sports. Yeah, but a regular, regular kites, uh, flying a kite is not an extreme sport. <laughs> okay. You know? Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I hope it's not an extreme sport. Okay. So have you ever flown a kite, Luis? Sorry? Have you ever flown a regular kite? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I have a kid and... You have kids and you fly kites with them? Okay, so good. Yeah. Good. Okay. And then can you read the next one here, motoring? Motoring? I read m moving. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so motoring, this is just like a, uh, just a word that means for like moving. So, so we were motoring along, right? Okay, we were motoring along on our snowboards down the mountain. So it's just another, another way to, uh, to say you're moving along. Okay, drive a so uh, motorcycle? Yeah, but, but it's not really, uh, you don't say I'm motoring along on my motorcycle. You're moving along. But just kind of like an extreme, um, well, kind of like just not really ex just uh, exclusive to people with extreme sports. But you could even be walking, you know, like let's say you're walking down a path and you. Just some slang, really, that you use in there. All right? May I ask? Uh huh, go ahead. About kite surfing? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh, can you do it anytime you want, or there there are specific months because it depends on wine. Yeah, so it depends on the wind. So um, let me see if they'll show you three sails, three types of sails. Um, yeah, so let's see in here. Nah. So I'm trying to see if they'll show you the three types. So. So you can't do it, obviously, if there's no wind. And then also, too, what happens is you have to have a certain um, uh, type of gear in order to handle it. So you'll have, like, a smaller yeah. – pardon me. you actually have a larger, larger sail for smaller winds, a medium-sized sail or kite for, me for medium-sized winds, and then a smaller one. You actually have a smaller one with smaller surface area for when it's heavy winds, because if yeah. you know, then you'll get carried away. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so so people get carried away. So yeah, you need to um, you need to have the right conditions. 
So carried away kite surfing. I'm sure we can see a video of somebody getting carried away. Um, let's see here. Let's see this kite now. I I I watched one. One. Oh, so, you, so you've seen that, yeah, where people get carried away. Yeah, um, in a plane with a plane. Oh, with a plane. So is it this yes. one here? Yes, I think so. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's it. So wow, so this guy's out here. Okay, let's see what happens to him. Now he looks like he knows what he's doing. Bye-bye. So yeah, oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Oh, so that guy, that guy probably didn't live, though, huh? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, they don't met in the airport. Oh, my gosh. Oh, how horrible. Oh, no. Oh, wow. That's too bad. Huh. This is very extreme. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean it's very oh my gosh, that's horrible. Huh. So yeah, people people will just get carried away as well, you know, when they're on their beach on the beach here. So here's probably somebody who got got carried away because the um they didn't have the right sail or something like that. You know. Anyway, let's uh Let's move on here. So, okay. Isn't that really real? No, that was real, yeah. That was real. And there's also people that just get carried down the beach because of that as well. You know? Oh, my God. Yep. Okay. So, all right. So here's some, here are some crazy surfers. So go ahead, Monia. Can you read surf? Okay. Surf... The foam formed by waves on the sea when they come in towards a shore. Mm -hmm. Yep. So a surf, the, the waves they form, let's see. Let's see if maybe there's a good graph here. No, not really. Um, uh, let's see if this one has it. No, not really. But this will give you an idea. So what happens is, you know, you have this deep water, okay? And then, as it gets towards the um, as it towards get, gets towards the shore, what happens is the water it's in a spiral like this, and it just pushes up, and then that's how you get waves. Okay, that's how you end up having a wave um, form for you. Okay, and then the next one here. Can you read this next one, Monia? Okay. An adrenaline rush, a strong falling of excitement mixed with fear. Mm -hmm. Yep, so an adrenaline rush. Has anybody here ever had an adrenaline rush for any reason? It doesn't have to be just extreme sports. Has anybody ever been in a situation where you've had an adrenaline rush? No. High, high places, maybe. High places, you get an adrenaline rush? Because you have fears of high places. Yep. Anyone else? The first dating. The first date? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, you, you, get an, you get an adrenaline rush. Um, plus, you have some exhilaration, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay so good. So good. So, date, dating is an extreme sport, right? Yeah. Okay, so good. Good. <laughs> Hey, um, Nuria. Hi, Nuria. Yeah. Hi, Nuria. Can you read this vo these vocabulary words, starting out with this first one here? Coslin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Coslin, the set of the land 
uh, the set of the land on the edge of the sea. Mm -hmm. Yep, you call it coastline. 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 Mm -hmm. Coastline. Yep. Have coastline. you have you been along Have you been along Japan's coastline? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, where were you during the tsunami? Um, in Chiba. <laughs> Chiba. So you were further away from it. Pardon? Were you far away from the tsunami? Yeah, very yes. far. Very far. <clears throat> so good, you got lucky. You got lucky then. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes, student. Mm -hmm. uh, a tsunami, uh, yes, a tsunami affected uh, to my country also uh, as to, uh, it, it was affected to Indonesia uh, in 2004. It was yep. a terrible disaster. Indonesia, I, uh, I think that affected yeah. uh, to, <laughs> to Sri Lanka also. Now we lost uh, nearly 40,000 people. Yep. Yeah, I think they estimated yeah. around 250,000 people total, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. What? What? It's okay. What? What were you gonna say? It's okay. What? What were you gonna say, Noria? Noria? Yeah. Were you gonna say something else? No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, your your tsunami was definitely more devastating. Um, just Naka. You know? Yes, sir. The same tsunami in two thousand four. Uh, Devastated Indonesia that many as country and my country both the same tsunami. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> very uh, very bad stuff. Very bad stuff. <laughs> so okay. So um, Cove, can you uh, can you continue reading here, Nuria? Can you read Cove? Cove. Mm -hmm. About Cove again. Cove. A small cell church happening in the coastline by. Yep, so like in here, this is a cove. This is a cove, all right? It's another mm -hmm. small cove. Yep. And, and depending on the size of the cove, a lot of coves can make, um, can make good surf spots. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it kind of wraps around into these coves. And it forms, it takes away the wind and everything else. Okay, so there we go. Oh, all right. Okay, so okay. good. Sorry, uh -huh. teacher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, go uh, ahead. We we are uh, talking about uh, extreme sports. Okay. Yep. But. Uh, uh, what uh, what is the the relation with coastline because tsunami is uh, is no uh, extreme sport or, or, no, I, or, I, or I, only is vocabulary yeah so so what happened is is in the article here we we're talking about uh, different things here okay all right you know there's coastering along the coastline okay so we used various vocabulary in here when talking about the extreme sports. And then when I was talking to um, when I was talking to Nuria, okay, she's in Japan, and one of her words was coastline. So in order to make sure she understood coastline, I asked her if she visited Japan's coastline. And then just kind of kind of naturally, I don't know the way I am, uh, I asked her if she was near the tsunami. Okay, because the tsunami affected the coastline. So kind of just drawing a correlation between the different words. Wow, okay, okay. okay. Does that okay. make sense? Okay. All right. And don't worry, I'll go off on a tangent every once in a while. I might start talking about cats or dogs. All right? Then, then you'll know that we're not talking about extreme sports, okay? So okay. Uh, no problem. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I see Eduardo. Okay, Eduardo, no problem. 2.31, you can't sleep. Um, yeah, so no problem, Eduardo. Uh, Ariam. Okay. Clamber. 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 Clean with difficult. Using both the feet and hands. 
Mm -hmm. yep, so, actually, this this term's new to me. I guess it's kind of like the UK English. Okay. All right. So here's where you're clambering. Okay. Trying to make sure you get up there. All right. And can you read the next one here? This pounding. Pounding, breathing heavily. He he heavily. Heavily. Oh. Yep. So sometimes, you know, your your heart is pounding, right? Okay. Okay. So so sometimes when your heart's pounding when you meet somebody. So um so evens just to continue on with your adrenaline rush and everything. Is your heart pounding on your first date? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, <okay. laughs> good, good, I figured that. All right, so good. Makes you feel alive, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, hurdle. So let me let me just check on this. So, so yeah, let's check the uh, pronunciation. What the heck do we mean about the? Oh, talking about the different ways to say the. Yeah, there's a little bit of buzz coming from me, even so I don't know why what it is. Okay. Yeah, so hurdle. Hurdle in here. This is how you pronounce this. Making sure I didn't say it improperly. Okay, so um and can you read the next one here? This hurdle. Go ahead, Ariam. Uh move very fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like mountain bikers, you know, they hurdle down a hill. Okay, here's a skier who's hurdling down a hill. Have you, have you guys seen this yet? These extreme uh, guys on these longboard skateboards, they go, go down the mountains, you know? Pretty crazy stuff. I don't think this kid, this kid doesn't look like he's an extreme supporter. Though. That's okay. In the future, he has time. Okay, so uh, let's go on to the next one. So, uh, Dishnaka, can you read this one? Throw in. Okay, uh, throw in Ed. Yeah, so this one, uh, so this one here, so throw in, what that's referring to is, um, you know, like, like if you're doing a trick. You know, like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go backside, and I'm gonna throw in a 360 air. Might be something, okay? All right. You also have an expression, throw in the towel, which is a little bit different, okay? Throw in the towel. All right, and that has to do with boxing. I know boxing is not an extreme sport, but throw in the towel. So when people are boxing, what happens is. If your uh, if your boxer is getting beat up, then you throw in the towel, okay? Because you don't want him to get hurt anymore, all right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, throw in is just like to to add in something else. Okay, so good, good, good. All right. So uh, can you read this next one, Dishnaka? Hook turn. Uh, hook a uh, hook turn, a fast turn close to the ground used to land at high speed. A fast mm -hmm. turn close to the ground used to land at high speed. Okay. Yeah, so let's see. Is there a hook turn that's going to be on here? Ah, no good, no good show, nothing good showing in here. So, yeah, so this is a hook turn, so you just do a really quick turn. You know, you go to the right or go to the left really fast. Okay, so. Anita, Anita, can you read this next one here? Work on the girls of the stream. Addicted to the excite, excitement, excitement. Of doing, excitement of doing stream sports. Okay, so you're hooked. You're hooked. Unfortunately, people also become hooked on, um, you know, Drinking, they become hooked on drugs, different things, out, other things they can be hooked on, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. so, but this is on the buzz or the feeling uh, that you get from the extreme sports. Can you read this next one here? Yes. Real CP. 
Looking for excitement. So these are thrill seekers, right? On the bus of the extreme. Some different things here, right? So, okay, and then bomb down. You're going to need a bomb down. Bomb down. Go down with great speed. Yep. So that's just going down. People also say barrel down. Okay. Bomb down. <laughs> These are real barrels. You know, you barrel down a hill. Okay. So, ah, wow, some pretty crazy pictures in there. Okay, so good, so good. So, um, let's look at let's look at probably the most extreme sport out of anything. Okay, so yeah, so this is uh, this is crazy stuff. I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but this is nuts. Crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. He's flying. <laughs> yeah, so they have these they have these school suits is what they call these. Oh. It's a beard. No, it's Superman. <laughs> yeah. So you see how it's winged out like that? I don't know if you all ever seen a winged squirrel? You know, where they have the squirrels that jump from jump from tree to tree? So they, they have these uh, suits like that where it has a mesh in between. And we'll, we'll read about how, uh, how these work. Look at that guy. Look how close he is to the surface, huh? He's so amazing. Yeah. Very. Yeah, <laughs> they are crazy. Yeah, I I want to do it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you you have to be, I, I, you, have I, to be I, you have to be pretty pretty good shape to do that. Here, check this guy out. Wow. Oh my God. Look at look at. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I think I think they are not crazy. I think they are not crazy. They are, they may want to feel the. Uh, impulse of delight, the strong excitement of delight. <laughs> yeah, but there's a little bit of craziness with, with people like that, you know. And they stay very close to the rocks. Uh huh. Yep. And yeah, we'll let we'll read uh we'll read something on this as well. Here, let me let me grab the article. Okay, so we can see how this works. Okay, so. I think the, a person must have must feel that uh, excitement of uh, the fear. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, without uh, feeling that excitement, it, uh, life is uh, not that experience. I think we must en we must enjoy that even uh, uh, delight. <laughs> You must enjoy that what? What was that last part? That that impulse, that impulse of uh, excitement, the fear. Yeah. yeah. That, the adrenaline rush there. So, um, okay, so let's uh, let's continue on. Not everybody got to read last time. Uh, let's see. I think I think Evans. I think we left off with you. I'm not sure though. So um, Evans, can you read this section here? And I'll give you all this um, this link here. Okay. Uh, I think I can read it in the, uh, here. Okay. Uh, if I've ever dream, uh, dreamt of soaring, uh, though the air like the superhero, you're not alone. Dreams of flying have captivated human imagination since prehistoric times. Even with the ad advent of aircraft, and the increasing availability of air travel, the ancient question stays with us. What what if if oh my god, it's very blurry. I can't read. 
Yeah, so uh, that's okay. I could simply spread our arms and fly like a bird. Continue. Mm, yep. Okay, for centuries, early flight pioneers tried to achieve this very feat by a attacking artificial wings to their arms and backs. But just as the myth of Icarus ended with the Greek hero failing to his death, history books are filled with tales of enthusiastic pioneers leaping from high place, wings spread and plummeting back to the earth. Yep. So plummeting falling down to the earth, okay? Okay, so good, good, yeah, and in here, um, yeah, so soaring, so like birds soar, okay, eagles soar, like when they're, when they have their wings spread out, they're like soaring along, okay? So captivated, captivated just means like you, you're just, you, you're just, um, you're focused on something, all right? Sometimes a, a person, like, so when you go out on your first date, you're always captivated with the uh, with the woman that you're with. Okay, as an example for you. Um, and let's see. So yeah, artificial wings. So you know, birds have real wings. Humans make artificial wings. Okay. And Icarus. Yeah. So Icarus. This is in the Greek mythology. And what happened is he tried to fly. Okay. And if I remember properly. Um, his wings, I think, were had um, oh, yeah, had wax or something on it, and he got too close to the sun, and they melted, and he fell to the ground. Okay, so all right, let's see here. Yeah, okay, good, good. So um, yeah, start start reading here, Lewis. Start reading here with today. The dream is a reality. And I'll tell you where to stop. Go ahead, Lewis. Okay. Um, from today, right? Mm -hmm. Today, uh, the dream is a uh, reality resembling, resembling something between a flying uh, squirrel and a snow angel. The uh, wing suit allow mm -hmm. sky drives and beige jumpers to leap out into the boy, spread the arms and soar through the air. Continue? Uh, please, yeah. In a sense, windsuit flying is a cross between sky driving and hand gliding. Light boat of these activities Wing side flying requires the flyer to either jump out on a aircraft or off a precipice. Uh -huh. Pre precipice, yep. Go ahead. to archive and high enough altitude. While hand gliders can cause in for a safe landing. Wing soy flyers have to deploy their parachutes and float the rest of the way to the ground. They simply, simply, simply can simply. reduce simply can reduce their speed fast enough for a safe landing without their use of a chute. Okay. All right. Continue. Go ahead. Yep. Continue this last part. Okay. Okay. But uh, until the moment they pull their parachute shore, windsoid flyers can soar horizontal at the high speeds and perform aerial acrobatics, all, all while the scene at a red much slower than that of the typical sky drive. So, why is the flying uh, not just falling in the wacky costume? Costume? Costume. Costume. Mm -hmm. 
read on to discover how physics, the science, and deca decades of experimentation have allowed wingsuit flyers to own the skies. Okay, so good, so good. So yeah, so these um, these skydivers and base jumpers. So base jumpers, we were watching people that were jumping off mountains. Okay, so that's what a base jumper is. And there's a this is an acronym. The the base. I forgot exactly what it means, um, but there's an acronym that goes with this because of the different like they jump off of structures. Oh, bridges, structures. Um, Wait, I forget the other two, but anyway, that's an acronym. That's why it has it as four capital letters, okay? So, and then hang gliding. So people have hang gliders. So let me show you a hang glider. Okay. So this is a hang glider. So it's kind of a mix of all this stuff, but they end up having these... Um, these squirrel suits is what they all end up in. Okay, so good, so good. We get to, uh, now we get to find out more about what exactly it is and how these work. Look at that. Pretty crazy, huh? Okay, good, good. Uh, Monia, can you, um, can you read this thing with this wingsuit aerodynamics? Okay, just, uh, yeah, just, just read this part here, okay? Go ahead, Monia. Okay, can you give me the link, please? No. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please. No, I'm just kidding around. Here you go. Right. By the way, you all are doing a good job of reading. Don't worry if there's words that are difficult. You know, it's okay. No problem. Okay. All right. All right. Wingsuit aerodynamics. Uh, to understand wingsuit aerodynamics and how the outfit allows it. Where to re to really fly, you have to understand the basic physics of flight. The first principle to keep in mind is that air is a is a fl float, much like water. Try to move your hand palm flat through a tube of water, or st or stick your hand out of a moving vehicle that that force resistance you feel is the motion of the float the air or the water Op opposing the motion of an object your hand flight is a careful relationship of four opposing forces white pulls the flying object down Lift in inches, inches uh, in the downward moment, momentum of the object meets the resistance of the air. If you have a flat surface of airfoil, then the net lift cannot cannot only slow the rate of the, of descent but actually move of the object upward through the air. While lift and weight cover vertical movement in the air, thrust, the dra thrust and drag cover horizontal, hor horizontal movement. Thrust occur occurs when uh, flapping wings or an engine push an object forward. Drag like lift is the force exerted by the fluid against a horizontally moving object. For more information on the physics of flight, read how airplanes work. Okay, good. It almost feels like you were uh, flying in a squirrel suit, huh? You know, so good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Yep. So aerodynamics, and what this is, is when the air flows over something. It's the aerodynamics. Sports cars have good aerodynamics. A van has poor aerodynamics, okay? Because there's a lot of resistance on that.
Okay. So now with these squirrel suits, though, they want to have a lot of resistance. All right. So their aerodynamics, they want to have this resistance because it keeps them up in the air, keeps them up in the air. So that's when it talks about this being flat. You want this flat. I don't know, have you ever, have you ever stuck your hand out of a car window? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you know how you have that force? Hopefully there's, yeah, okay, good. So yeah, you know how you have that force. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with this world? I mean, I just put, <laughs> stick my hand out of a window. And have to have sex. I mean, I have no idea what goes on. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so childish, isn't it? You know, you can't even search for anything. I don't. And look, guys, I promise you, I don't. I don't search for anything bad. I mean, I, I really don't. You know, I mean, oh my gosh, just crazy stuff. I don't. I don't like Google. I must have my A, and then I'm a male and single. I must think that. Uh, Everything I have has to have a little bit of garbage. But anyway, so yeah, so this is that type of force. So what happens is when you have that force on a flat surface like that, those aerodynamics, it keeps it going up, and it becomes an airfoil, an airfoil, okay? All right? And that's what you have on airplanes as well. Those, the wings are the airfoils on there, okay? So here you go. So here's a wing, right? And this also helps as well. So this is an airfoil and how that works. Okay, good, 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 good. So thrust and drag, okay? So thrust is like when they can push it forward and make it move faster, and then drag is where it's holding it up. Okay, yep, so like they have here, so when the flapper wings push an object forward, and drag is when they, they stop it and go back, okay? So good, very good. Okay, Nuria, we didn't forget about you. Go ahead, Nuria. Yeah. Hello. Uh huh. Yeah. Can you read this? A sky driver um, exiting an aircraft. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you need to, I, I gave you the link in case you want to look the link up. Okay. Okay. Right. A, uh, a sky driver exiting an aircraft will in. Simply experience the pull of gravity, the force of weight. If he or she is wearing a windsuit, then the suit airfoil will provide lift. However, the airfoil foil is not large enough to accumulate. Um, accumulate. Accumulate. Mm -hmm. Accumulate okay. in, in, a, in a lift to push the flyer's weight up. Or through the air. This is also why wing source flyers um, must are parachute to land. The small wings simply can provide enough uh, lift to slow down flyer to a safe landing speed. Continue. Uh, please. Mm -hmm. Likewise, a uh, wing suit. Uh, provided no truth and repetitive <laughs> flap <laughs> flap 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 your arms will only send you into a step dive or deadly spin. To shoot forward through the air, a swing suit flyer must depend on his or her great ratio. The, the, the relationship between lift, drag, and weight that, what is that determines how far a gliding object can travel from a particular exit. As weight pull the flare down, lift allows the flare to cut horizontally through the air. How does a swing suit allow the wearer to air? A rift, the rocket lift, read the next page to to run the different parts of the yes. typical wingsuit. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. So gravity, <laughs> this is gravity this is what keeps us on Earth, right? And pulls us. You know, and this is also what keeps the the um, the moon going around the uh, <laughs> Earth, right? And it, yeah. it, it's what keeps the sun going around the Earth. So you know, the sun goes around the Earth. Did you know that? 
Really? No, I'm just kidding. We go around the sun. Okay, but it's all due to gravity. Okay, I'm not a physics major. So again, this airfoil of the suit. Okay, so yeah, so this glide ratio, so lift, drag, and whatever goes on here. Okay, good. So let's, um, I want to show you one other thing. So they talked about uh, needing a parachute in order to land. Don't worry, folks. I know we kind of rushed towards this end, but let's just watch this crazy guy. So he's going he's gonna to land without a parachute. Boy, come on, speed up. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's just get towards the landing. Here we go. Come on, hurry up. Oi, well, I'll give you all the link just in case we don't we don't make it through class here. Pretty crazy people, though, huh? Yeah. Damn. Okay, here he comes. Look at that. Now, is that just crazy or what? Yeah. Look at look at all that good cardboard they wasted. So those are just cardboard boxes. <laughs> what, a, what a great world we live in. People are starving all around the world. We have this whole uh, whole thing going on with global warming, and then uh, we have people just just putting cardboard boxes and foam things out so that they can land. I swear to you. So some of this stuff doesn't make sense. Okay, I've actually stayed a little bit longer than I should. I have one more or two more classes coming up. So I'm going to end class, okay? Uh, Aryam, nice to see you again. Dishnaka, I'm glad you finally made it in. Anita, good. Fabio, Evans, Luis, Monia, and Noria. Okay, Hi. everybody. Thank you, sir. Get some more classes. Thank you. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you guys all. Thank you, bye. Nice to see you all. Bye bye, guys. Bye. Hello. Hi. Nice to see you all.